fun. Good morning. Today we'll be talking about Parkinson's disease, which is a very common condition nowadays in Nigeria. Thank you very much, Dr. Alagbe and uh, Michelle, for coming on the program. It's a pleasure to have you both with us again. Now, we're talking today about Parkinson's disease, which on which had its uh, World Awareness Day on the 11th of April, but unfortunately seems to be becoming more and more common. Dr. Alagbe, can you explain to us why this is happening? Hmm. I wish I had the answer to that question, Pamela, which is nice to see you again. Uh, Parkinson's disease, why it's happening? Number one, uh, there is increased awareness of some of these diseases in Nigeria. Before, when they existed, they were given other names. Two, there is increased utilization of the medical facilities, especially the specialist care. Uh, whereby these things are diagnosed. Those are my um, the experiences that I have had in the few uh, time I've been in Nigeria. Uh, back in the United States, of course, it's not something that is new. Now, let me start with this. Uh, what is Parkinson's disease to start with? Um, it is an age-related neurodegenerative disorder affecting a part of the brain. That's Sorry, I need to stop you right there. Yes. We are the common man. We need you to break that down. Uh, and I will break it down, ma'am. It, it is a neurodegenerative disease. It's age-related. What I mean by those is this. It tends to start at a particular age in time. Usually, 1% of air people above the age of 60 are <clears throat> prone to developing this disease. That's why I said age-related. What do I mean by neurodegenerative? It just simply means there is impaired, progressive impaired functioning of a part of the brain. That part, again, if you'll excuse me, it is called it is called the substantial nigra of the brain. The brain functions principally by secreting chemicals called neurotransmitters. Now, in Parkinson's disease, there is progressive dysfunction of the utilization of a neurochemical called dopamine. Dopamine. Dopamine in this part of the brain is responsible for coordinating movement. Now, mark my word, I didn't say initiating or coordinating the movement. Another part of the brain actually helps with initiating and uh, you know propagation of movement, but coordinating it is uh, what this part of the brain does. Now, what happens is that when this illness sets in, the individual will have problem of coordinations in the rear area of, uh, you know, starting movement. So there is this slowing down of movement, what we call ready kinesis. And then apart from slowing down of movement, we have uh, extreme rigidity of the various parts of the body, uh, especially the limbs. The individual will have moments where they will be having what we call resting tremor. And finally, you're going to have um, gait disturbances. The person cannot maintain their gait. Now, let me repeat quickly. So you have rigidity, you have tremors, you have slowing down of movement, and you have uh, impairment of the person's gait. Now, these symptoms are called the motto symptoms of Parkinson's disease. That means there are non motto symptoms, uh, which oftentimes is often neglected. Uh, the individual may have uh, difficulty controlling the saliva in their mouth. They have drooling, periodic drooling. They may have problem with smell. They may have problem with sleep whereby you see a lot of leg movement. We call that restless leg syndrome. 
and so on and so forth. Please give us more. I, I, we want the, the details. Because just in case anybody is listening, some of these symptoms that you're calling vague. You know, we're really fascinated. We want to know the length and breadth, whether it's for themselves or for their family members. It could be ringing a bell. And that could trigger a person taking that person to come and see you, the, neurolo the neurologist. Very, so please tell us more good. about often, the symptoms. Yes, oftentimes, yes, it's very important that these early symptoms are noted because they are often missed. When somebody starts saying, I can't smell well, I can't perceive things in the smell. When somebody starts drooling uh, saliva from the corner of their mouth, or when somebody complains of difficulty uh, of sleeping, particularly uh, this unusual movement of the body, especially the leg, while sleeping, Sadly enough, in 30% of this patient, the depression is often mm. the initiating symptoms. And uh, unfortunately, in this part of the world, we're not, uh, we're still working on that uh, awareness of depression. And, and, and oftentimes, when the depression comes, it's often confused, even sometimes for Parkinson's, because there is a slowing down. In depression, I know you don't want me to use the medical word, it's called psychomotor retardation, which is often confused to with rigidity of Parkinson's disease. The person may have what we call postural hypotension. Now, you can see that these are the so-called non-motor symptoms of the disease. By the time... A doc, by the time these things are happening to patients, uh, you know, they may not see a physician. Unfortunately, it's when the motor symptoms start. I'm talking of my experience in this part of the world. Uh, and I say, Look, I cannot yeah. walk properly. I, I cannot move. I don't know what's going on. And then that's when, when you now ask questions, then that's where you would notice that they've had this disease way before they are presenting before you. Now, as if that is not all, treatment causes struggle with, do I want level? Well, I have to raise it up to treat Parkinson's, but I have something at the corner of the road. The chances of treatment, I mean, I mean, I mean, initiating a psychotic episode. As the patient, as the prog uh, treatment progresses, you see stand the risk because it's a progressive illness. You see stand the risk of what we call cognitive decline again. Sorry for the use of medical terms, in which the person cannot think straight. They cannot make. Uh, you know, the enjoyment level is impaired. You know, they cannot make a reasonable, uh, you know, sensible decision, cognitive decline. Around that time, the depression wasn't. Give me one second to talk about depression. Depression is different from sadness. Hmm. Two different things. Yeah. Oftentimes, people confuse them. Depression is a result of uh, a neurochemical in the brain that is not functioning properly. Remember, we said in Parkinson's, dopamine is messed up. Now, dopamine also interacts with all the neurochemicals in there, including serotonin. In an area of the brain, I'm not going to say the name of the area of the brain, you have serotonin. The burden of the illness, the, 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 the burden of inability to mobilize effectively, the burden associated with medication and all kinds of things, plus the neurochemical derangement caused by this illness, I'm talking about dopamine, often worsens the depression later in the disease. Sad enough, depression 
is often neglected when it comes to treatment of Parkinson's disease. Sadly enough also, depression is what determines, I mean, not what determines, affects the progression of a disease and determines the ultimate life expectancy in Parkinson's disease. Let me say one thing. Parkinson's does not expect, it does not affect life expectancy. I'm glad we have so many people now working on this problem. I'm so happy we have the physiotherapist here. It does not affect life expectancy. It is known. I think it was in 1967, life expectancy then was about 10 years. Now it's almost about 14, 15 years. Remember, I said typically the date of onset, uh, the age of onset is about uh, 60 years. So add 14 to that, the person is 74. Okay, let's talk about the life expectancy in Nigeria. So, uh, you know, realistically speaking, it does not really significantly affect life expectancy. However, if we take care, if, if we don't focus just on the motor symptoms and we look at things like depression and some other things uh, that really matters, you will see um, that uh, the picture of this illness uh, is not worth to, will not be well taken care of. Okay, thank you very much. So, Dr. Ali, when you talked about treatment, what are the important areas of treatment for Parkinson's? Thank you, Pamela. We, I mentioned something earlier about physiotherapy. Yes, and in fact, as you just bring it up, we happen to have an excellent physiotherapist on the program. Michelle, do you want to talk about the importance of physiotherapy and the very important, and not just physiotherapy, of movement for treatment of Parkinson's disease? Good morning, Dr. Pamela. Thanks for having me. Um, so. Yes, the, the physical therapy, I mean, the sooner we start working with the patient when you first identify, um, you know, Dr. Alagbe mentioned the importance of early identification of symptoms. So we always advocate for our patients. Once you start seeing, you know, a, a person who starts to kind of hold the furniture as they're walking or take small steps or stop walking to talk and answer your question, you start noticing that there's something wrong with that person's movement and their balance. And we identify that and start working on it right away. Uh, you know, the the sooner you you treat that, the better. And so, you know, how he described the the movement issues, I like to describe it as sort of a wiring issue. You know, when you have Parkinson's, your brain, which would normally, you know, you would say, I want to walk. And your brain would normally tell your leg, okay, activate this muscle, pick up foot, <laughs> et cetera. You know, and, and when, with Parkinson's, you lose that wiring. The brain doesn't give the right signals. It doesn't tell the leg what to do to walk, for example, or the muscle how to activate so that you can stand up to get out of your chair. And with physio, a lot of what we do is what I like to call rewiring. You know, you're, you're practicing all these things and, and teaching the body how to move properly, um, or reteaching the body how to move properly. And it's important to start that early and to continue with it throughout, because as soon as you stop, you allow the, the disease to continue what it was doing, slow your movements, make them smaller, make the coordination worse. So it's really important to, to start and to continue um, and, and not stop training all of these things. I think I think that's actually a very important part of why I feel like Parkinson's has actually the life expectancy has really increased because of this important focus on fixing because you can fix the movement you can't stop the condition but you can actually do things to fix the issues to do with the movement which help in a lot of of areas so thank you very much for that Dr. Al Dr. Alagwe talk to us about um, other forms of treatment I hear there are all sorts of new things coming up there's drugs and, and anyway you tell us a bit a bit more about it yeah, very good. Uh, and thank you very much, Mich uh, Michelle. Uh, she mentioned, she, she described what is done, uh, what the problem is in Parkinson's. 
a will to do something, inability, uh, inability of the body to follow through, that in itself is a psychological defeat. It really defeats the person's sense of being, and that's one of the contributors to depression. So when they are going through this, that is one of the first things we recommend. Get a physiotherapist. This slow movement, let's do it. To answer your question, don't let me digress too much. I just love the way she uh, described that physiotherapeutic um, intervention. Now, a lot of things have been coming up over the years. Number one, again, one is physiotherapy, the use of the bike, uh, mobile, um, uh, what called stationary bike. It has actually been shown to really improve motor function tremendously in Parkinson's. And it's been known that when there's improvement in the motor function, no matter how little it is, there's a study that shows the correlation with depression. Uh, it's, it's really a very good result uh, when the person can actually do some movement. Now, the other uh, you know, new things we are seeing, because we know the uh, chemistry of uh, the brain now, uh, advancement in neuroscience, we now have newer medications. Uh, the medications have profound side effects, but there are many more medications coming out there. All what this medication does is to correct the medical imbalance. Secondly, you have medications to treat the also uh, non uh, the other other non motor uh, symptoms of depression, but well, notably psychotherapy. What a great deal! The use of antidepressants is remarkable. All my patients are on it simply because I know with time this will come. Now there is also the nutritional aspect. Of the treatment now unfortunately i can't tell you more about that but i know there's a nutritionist that I refer my patients to that will formulate the kind of uh, uh, um, nutrition that will help the condition okay so no that's very interesting and i think it's good for people to know that there are different modalities that can be used to manage the condition even if it's a condition that can't be cured but what i also like to talk about are things like stigma because in Nigeria, unfortunately, what we find is a number of people mm. not wanting to acknowledge that they have um, Parkinson's disease. And as somebody mentioned earlier, they do, even doctors talk about this is not Parkinson's, it is Parkinsonism. It is, you know, I'm, I'm sort of hedging around this. You know, what's been your experience with stigma? How can we help to overcome it in our country? Very good. Uh, uh, let me start by answering that Parkinson's, Parkinsonism, and all this kind of a thing. Yes, there are some disorders of the brain also that will give uh, symptoms that looks like Parkinson. They call them Parkinson's-like, but is not from that part of the brain that I was talking about. That is what it is. Now, go back to the stigma. One of the things I have found, even when I came back to this country a few years ago, is that some of these diseases that we don't know anything about is always tag, a demonic attack, or some kind of fetish involvement. Oftentimes, like I said, uh, you know, when uh, Parkinson's starts uh, in some people, uh, the symptoms are seemingly weird. Look at it. And a grown man drooling saliva off their mouth a grown man not being able to walk, a grown man having depression and behaving uh, in a disorganized way, it just boils down to we don't know what is wrong with these. There is a mental illness. Oh, of course, you know about mental illness anyway. Uh, it, it, it's something the mom must have done something wrong, and the gods are against this person. Sigma often comes from not understanding what we are seeing. That has been my experience. Hence, what are you doing? Educating the public of what this thing is. Let's talk about it and continue to talk about it so people will know what it is. This helps in breaking the stigma to an extent. Let's talk, talk, 
talk about it. Thank you. And also, you, the fact it's very interesting that you mentioned that it's more in men. You just kept talking the man. It's more common in men than women, because also that's a, that's another that's another thing to do. Oh, uh, we don't have much time left. We just have like two minutes to the end of the show. So let me just ask uh, Michelle for her last words, and then I'll come back to you to give your own last words. Michelle, any last words for our listeners? Um, I, I think to sum it up, you know, you, you just talked about stigma and, um, you know, people not wanting to necessarily reach out and get the care that they need. And I would just say it is so, so important that when you see something is off, regardless, just do something about it. I see too many patients who, um, you know, refused to do something, refused to use a cane, for example, and then fell and, and broke a hip and now are seriously injured and have much more issues. So it's so important to just treat the problems that you can while you can um, and get a hold of it in time and, and make sure that you're really doing the best thing for yourself. Um, and I guess the only other thing I would say is we do have physiotherapy available in Lagos. Um, <laughs> we have a center in VA and another one on the mainland um, near Bagada. So if if you need any help or you want to get checked out, give us a call. The number is 0813-028-0496. Thank you. Any, any last words? Well, I just want to say thank you, Pamela, for bringing up this kind of a topic or this kind of platform whereby people can be educated about the things around our world, which, as I said earlier on, is the main problem in this part of the world, not knowing what they are going through. We talking about it goes a long way in helping them, not only to educate them about it, this is where they can get help, just like Michelle has just told them. And we do know we have neurologists all over the country more importantly, if you are the diagnosed with disease, please pick up your mind to really work with your provider, your healthcare provider, your physiotherapist, whoever is involved in your care. Remember what I said, uh, a Parkinson is, well, it doesn't really affect your life expectancy. It's going to make things difficult for you, but you can make things better just by doing those things that I've just advised. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think that's the issue. Quality of life. You can improve your quality of life. And I think that's that's key. Thank you very much for coming on the program and sharing your knowledge with us. Thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe for new video updates.